He's risen. He's risen he is risen. He is risen Isn't that great to be here today knowing that our Savior is alive? I don't know about you, but that gives me a lot of hope because I know that without Him being risen, I'm a lost, lost person. Before we get into the message, this morning I just want to mention that next week we're going to be doing a spiritual gifts inventory. So if you are wondering, what is my spiritual gift and how do I use that? Next Sunday during the Sunday school hour, um, Lydia is going to be teaching a class and you can sign up in the foyer in the back. Love to have you be a part of that and learning more about how God uh, has equipped us and empowered us to do the work he calls us to. So today we're in the seventh so series of the words of Jesus from the cross. And it's probably the most powerful words for me as I've been meditating and studying on these words. And today, I've titled the sermon, the title of the sermon, Tel Telestai. Can you say that? To Telestai. Try it one more time. Te Telestai. That sounds Greek to me, doesn't it? That's because it is. It means it is finished. The words it is finished, though, when we use them in the English language, the word it is finished we don't really quite grasp that, right? So like you clean your house. You get done cleaning your house and you go, huh, it's finished. And then some kid comes running across the floor with dirty shoes and you start all over again. You do the laundry and you get done with all your laundry. You think, man, it's all done. This is really great. And you think, it's finished. And then someone throws a pile of dirty clothes beside the hamper instead of inside it. And you're thinking, it's not done. And it's not. You get done eating dinner and you go, ah, it's finished. And then in four hours you're going, there's the food. I need some more food. I'm hungry, right? You're, you're going to do that today. You had breakfast upstairs here. Some of you, I saw some of you eating. It's like, oh my goodness. It's a good thing we had extra food. I mean, Dan, you would have thought he was going to milk a herd of cows here today when he got done eating up there. And he's going to go home today and he's going to eat lunch like he's going to chop wood all afternoon. And then tonight about six o'clock, he's going to be going, hey, Tamara, I need some more food. I'm hungry. It's never finished. And so in our definition, when we start talking about it is finished, we really don't get a full grasp because in our mind, it is finished means there's an end right now, but there's going to be more coming in a little bit. Jesus hung on the cross and he said, it is finished. Tell, tell us that. It's done. And I think when he said those words, it is finished, I think there was a smile on his face because he was describing to us in a way that we never understood it before, and we fully grasp only as we look back at the cross and we realize what he means when he says it is done. He did so much for us. But think of all those unfinished projects we have at home. In our garages, guys, we have how many projects that we were going to finish last week. We just didn't get them done. A couple of years ago, it's been about eight or ten years ago, I was having a nap in the afternoon and I was having the most awesome dream. And in the middle of that dream, someone called and woke me up. I still wonder how that thing was going to end. I mean, it was a great dream, you know. Does that ever happen to you? You get woke up in the middle of a nap and you don't get to finish it. You don't get to finish the dream. You don't get to finish. We have all this stuff that we don't finish. We have a trail of unfinished stuff behind us. And Jesus hangs on the cross. His life on earth as a human being is coming to an end. He's now moving into that realm of Messiah, of Savior in ways that have never been experienced before. And he says, it's finished. And today, we want to talk about that. We want to talk about how do we move beyond this unfinished part? How do we move to this place of full completion? And Jesus said, it's me. I believe, first of all, that that cry on the cross when Jesus says, Tetelestai, he's saying it's a cry of triumph. The work of salvation is now complete. It's done. It's fully, fully finished. We, we have to realize that when Jesus is saying on the cross, it is finished, he is not saying it in a phrase of defeat. He's saying it as a testimony, a cry of triumph. It is finished. Ha, I've done it. Listen as I read the words from John chapter 19, starting with verse 28. Later knowing, all, later knowing that all was now completed so that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge on it and put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' mouth. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. 
That cry when Jesus said, it is finished, telestai, I think it was a smile on his face in the midst of all the pain and the agony of what he was experiencing on the cross. He's going, I've done it. I completed the journey. It was fully, fully complete. And it's, it's so hard for us to grasp because we never quite get there. Jesus came to earth and he took on the role of a servant. He, it says in Philippians, being found in appearance as that of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And it was there that God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all names, that the name of Jesus every knee would bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Jesus was living as a human being and he worked on earth as, as you and I, as human beings. He dealt with all the pressures, all the temptations, everything that we deal with, he dealt with. Only he didn't succumb to them like we do. He didn't mess up. He didn't miss the mark. He didn't, he didn't do the wrong things. He did the right things. And in the midst of that, he was able to hang on the cross and say, Dad, I did my job. I did it all the way to the end, exactly the way you scripted it. I did what you wanted me to do because you called me to, and I want to honor you. It is finished. What would our life be like if at 18, Jesus would have said, you know, I've been working in dad's carpenter shop quite a while now, and I'm ready to just go out and like, I'm going to buy me a herd of racing camels, and, and we're going to into camel racing, and we're just going to have a grand old time, you know, we're just going to live life to the fullest. I'm sure if Jesus would have done that, he would have had the best racing camels in the world. I think they have racing camels. You know, he, he would have had the best ones, I'm sure, or... What if he would have got to age 33 and instead of starting his ministry, he would have said, you know, I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep pounding nails and being a carpenter or pounding spikes or whatever they built with back then and building rocks. I, I'm just going to be a construction worker and a carpenter. I'm not going to do all this thing. What would our lives be like today? But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus took on the task of his father, the master, the creator of the world, and he said, Dad, I'm going to do exactly what you want me to do, and I'm going to do it to the fullest. And so when he's hanging on the cross, in the midst of all the agony, Jesus is saying, I've completed my task, Dad. You know, if you, if you climb Mount Everest, if you're a mountain climber, and it's a season, the time of year when they climb Mount Everest. If you climb Mount Everest, 29,000 and some odd feet, you get to the top of the mountain, you can only stay there for a few moments, you know. A long time on top of Mount Everest is maybe 30 minutes. And then you got to get off because the weather is bound to change in the middle of the afternoon. You have to get off the mountain. And you get to the bottom of the mountain and you go, hmm, I should try that other tall mountain that's just over there a little bit further. It's never completed. You complete a marathon. You run a marathon. Like, I have been to some marathons. At the starting line, everybody's like, whoo, ah, yeah. Oh, man, it's so great. Woo, I get to run a marathon. And they're all excited. They're jumping around there, and they're pumped up because they're getting ready to start this marathon. And they start off running, and they're just running along, running along. And all of a sudden, they're starting to get winded. They look at their watch. And it's like, oh, I only went two miles. I'm already out of gas. What am I going to do? Well, you see, in all of life, we get so pumped up about starting. And Jesus said, victory is in completing a task not in starting it. Victory is in completing a task. If you're playing a sport, it's really fun to play the game, but it's exciting when you win and they raise up your hand and you go, winner, and you stand there going, eh, bit that guy, pin him, Whew. you know, I won, I hit more home runs than anybody else or whatever. It's all in winning, right? But we don't really win. Because whatever we do, we know there's something more to do. If you climb Mount Everest, there's another mountain to climb. If you run a marathon, if I wouldn't have slowed down at mile 13, I could have, I could have shaved five minutes off of my time. If I wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. We're always incomplete outside of Christ. But with Christ, he brings completion. And he taught us that victory comes through finishing. And so we ask the question, what did Jesus finish? What did he finish on the cross? The malice, all that hatred that was aimed at Jesus from his enemies, it was done. They did everything to Jesus they could think of. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They nailed his feet and his hands 
to a cross. They beat him with a whip. There was blood everywhere. It was a mess. They tried to destroy Jesus. And he's standing there on the cross or hanging on the cross. And he's going, it's done. You still didn't win, guys. The suffering was over. Yes, he had a lot of pain, but he's going, ah, today's a hard day, but the victory is here. It's awesome. He looked at the thief beside him, if you remember, and he said, today you'll be with me where? In a sweaty locker room? No, he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Victory is here. Tell, tell us, Ty, it is finished. All of the Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled in Jesus. When he was given the wine vinegar, it fulfills Psalm 69. When he had been sold for 30 pieces of silver and turned over to the, to the leaders, it fulfilled what was said in Zechariah. When his hands and his feet were pierced, it fulfilled Psalms 22. When his garment was divided, it was another piece of Psalms 22 that was fulfilled. It, it's surrounding all of his life. He fulfilled all of the Old Testament prophecies. The ceremonial law, done. You know, for years in the Old Testament, people were slaughtering lambs and goats and bulls and trying to get all this stuff right to get forgiveness of their sins. And they kept coming back over and over. Part of their worship in the Old Testament was a bloodbath, trying to find restoration with the Father. And it couldn't happen because there was never a perfect sacrifice until Jesus came along. And when Jesus came along, he hung on the cross. And it was Jesus and only Jesus that was able to say, tell, tell us, die. It is finished. It's done. Completion has come. It tells it this, it says it this way in Hebrews chapter 10. Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. And then he said, here am I. I have come to do your will. He, he set aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since... And for by that one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Jesus is saying, I've completed the task of my father. His earthly life as a human being was done. He was now moving into the heavenly realm to live as the son of God. The work of redemption completed. The work of redemption didn't happen because Jesus was born. It didn't happen because he was baptized in the Jordan River. It didn't happen because he preached a sermon on the mount. It didn't happen because he did all this teaching. It happened and fulfilled itself when Jesus died on a cross and rose again from the grave. That's victory, folks. Tell, tell us, die. It is finished. The work is done. You can no longer pay for it. You can no longer earn it. You can no longer get there. God's purpose was done. Jesus bought into that notion from the very beginning of time. In John chapter 4, he said, the food of my food is to do the will or the work of my father. That was what he was hungry for. Jesus was driven not to begin his father's work, but to complete his father's work. He got joy in completing what his father had asked him to do. How about you and I? Do we get joy in that? How many times have we felt God call us to do something? We say, God, I'm going to do it, man. I'm going I'm to just save thousands. I'm going to share Christ with everybody. I'm going to live my life for you. I'm going to read the Bible every day. I'm going to read all the whole thing. And, and then two or three days come and go, and it's like, I'm busy. I got grass to mow. I got weeds to pull. I got flowers to plant. I got kids to take care of. I got jobs to do. I got cars to fix. I got things I want to do, places I got to go. Man, God, I, I want to, but I just don't have time. And we don't complete our task. I think it breaks his heart. I think it breaks his heart. And yet, he keeps calling us and saying, come. And, and he tells us in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, he says, and being confident of this, he who began a good work and you will carry it out to completion. He's never going to stop calling on us because he understands 
that we don't get it. We don't get the it is finished piece. We don't get the completion. We're, we start and we stop. We start and we stop. We're like a bad truck driver on a hill. We don't get going. We just jerk and jerk and we don't get there. And God says, please just come to me. All you are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for my yoke is easy and my burden is hard. You can do this. He, he can lift us and move us beyond where we want to be and take us where he wants us to go. You see, the work of the cross is triumph. He's made it possible. You see, what he's telling us is we cannot, we cannot, we cannot earn our salvation. It's been paid for. When Jesus was hanging on the cross and he said, tell tell us die. He's saying, look, guys, I don't care how many talents or abilities you think you have. I don't care how much money you think you have. I've taken care of this one. It's on me. It's on me. <laughs> the other day, the staff and I, we went to lunch. and We went to, to leave, and someone had picked up our tab. You know? It was like, wow, thanks. It really felt good. It was nice. It was great. And, and now we're going to feel like we should buy this guy lunch sometime. We always feel like we want to do something more. And Jesus says, you know, all I want is you. I just want you to give me your heart. I just want you to come and, and, and live with me. I want you to know that it is finished. Totelestai. Your sins have been paid for. You can't earn it. You can't make it happen in any way. It's a free gift. In John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist is down by the river and he says this. He says, look. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John recognized that Jesus was the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice, the one that could make life worth living. And it says that he came to take away the sins of the world. What does that mean, to take away the sins of the world? In Psalms 103, it says that he takes away our sins or our transgressions as far as the east is from the west. You know how far that is? You can go that way as far as you want to go, and you're still going east. You can go that way as far as you want to go, and you're still going west. They don't intersect. You can go west, and as long as you're going west, you're still going to be going west. You never get to the east. And it says, that's how far he takes our sins or our transgressions away from us. So let me ask you this question. What keeps us, you and me, what keeps us, from taking our sins and just laying them at the foot of the cross saying, you know, Jesus, I can't do this anymore on my own. I need you. I don't know about you, but man, that's the only place I can find life is when I go there. You see, the best news that we've ever heard is it doesn't matter what our sin is. Jesus says, paid for. It's done. Anger? If you have fits of rage, Jesus says, yep. Tell Telestai. It's finished. Sinful ambition, gossip, drunkenness, fornication, embezzling, disobedience, laziness, pridefulness, murder. Yep, they're all taken care of. Tell Telestai. It is finished. It's done. You see, anything that you can ever think of, anything that you've ever done, anything that's there, Jesus says, Tell Telestai. It's finished. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to be taken back and held back and kept from being who I want you to be. So when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, Jesus was already saying, Tell Telestai. It's finished, folks. I'm going to do what no one else can do so that you can do what no one else can do. And that is release yourself to God and be who He wants you to be. You see, Jesus said it's finished because he's saying the work of salvation is now complete. It's a free gift. It's for you and me. Live it out. And, and he calls us to live in a way that goes beyond anything our earth can ever offer to us. Since it's finished, resign ourselves to the will of God and say, okay, God, let me do it your way because you took care of it. It's finished. You can't add anything of value to what he's done. It's a free gift. He offers it to us. All of us are doomed to failure if we try and do it our own way. But we're given life when we come to him. It tells, Paul says it this way in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith. 
And this not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For you are, or we are, God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works or great works, which God prepared or Christ prepared in advance for us to do. Isn't that pretty amazing? He says, guys, it's a free gift. I don't know about you, but I love it. I love to know that it's taken care of. I love to know that it's done, it's over. And I can come to the Father and I can say, okay, Daddy, I've messed up. And he goes, tell, tell us that. It's finished, son. Come. Come. We need that more than anything. So, so it really comes down to this, guys. We have to make a choice. We have to make a choice. Do we really want Tautelestai in our life? There's so many things we like to hold on to. You see, it is finished describes the fate of Satan. Satan's power and work has been destroyed. But he's still out there grasping, you know? So when I was a little kid, we were rednecks and hillbillies. Some people think I still am, and that's okay. And so we would catch turtles, snapping turtles, and we would butcher them. And, and you take a snapping turtle, to butcher a snapping turtle, you have to take its head off because they, they got some pretty powerful jaws. And we would, Dad would grab a hold of the snapping turtle's head and pull it out of its body, and you would sever it and lay it off on the side. And he'd say, now stay back, guys, don't mess with that. And I can remember going over by that turtle with a little stick, and we would sit there and kind of poke at it and mess around with that head. And, and you know, that head was still trying to come close on that stick. And, and finally, we'd get tired of kind of poking at the turtle's head, and you'd put up its mouth, it'd go... But it was already dead. The, the turtle was gone. But it would still try one more time. And that's what Satan does to us. He keeps trying. He keeps trying, but there's no life. Because Jesus said, tell tell us that. It's finished. He's not there. He has no power. Jesus came and he said this in John 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And if you know me, you know my Father as well. He's telling us there is life through me. John 10.10, 10, one of my favorite passages, it says, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. And all who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and they will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That's what Jesus meant when he said, tell Telestai. Don't leave here today without that. Don't leave here today carrying the burden of your sin and your life on your shoulders. Release it to God and let Him speak those words that He has spoken to all of us. And He wants us to hear them at the core of our being. Tell Telestai. It's finished. It's finished. Say that with me. Tell Telestai. Ready? Tell Telestai. It's finished. Father, I thank You for today. I thank You for Your great love for us. And I thank You for the way that You have promised to give us life. You have promised to give us life abundantly beyond anything we can ever dream or imagine. And God, I pray that as we live our life here today, that you will just help us as a people to be who you want us to be and to, to live our life in a way that reflects you. God, I pray that you will help us as a people to, to be willing to share that with those around us, that they could experience life in its fullest. God, we give you the glory for today. In Jesus' name, amen.